Okay, hello X Traders, and we're back with another video, and this time it's going to be about Think or Swim. So let's go ahead and dive into, as promised in a previous video at some point, ThinkScript. In this case, we're actually going to look at the code itself, which is ThinkScript is what it's called. And it's really cool because you can actually uh, subscribe to the uh, TDMR Trader Think or Swim uh, Use ThinkScript uh, newsletter or something like that, and it sends you emails on you know uh, what different scripts different users are, are uh, using uh, in those days or in these days. So let's go ahead and get started uh, with creating a script. Okay. And this is the actual think script tab. So in this thing, this is the think script tab. This is where you can write and edit and view the different scripts that you are interested in. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as you can see here, I have some, I wanted to go ahead and look at some of these that I have been writing uh, for, uh, for myself. And let me, before I dive into the coding, which is probably going to be a little, you know, off-putting to many, uh, but I hope to to work through some of the simplest examples first, let me uh, tell you what we want to get to. You know, let's let's look at the prize first. Okay, so this is what it's going to be about. Uh, this is what really got me excited about this. Uh, over here in the charts, yes, in the charts tab, as you can see, I have um, a chart, right? The volume uh, down here, it's got the extended hours session as well. I don't have the volume profile turned on, but that's fine. This is because I um, I want I created a strategy, right? And what the strategy does, it's basically you creating your own algorithm and with all this hype about, you know, uh, AI, uh, well, basically, you know, you're creating your own AI tool and you expect that AI tool to perform, to give you money, uh, or at least to make you more money than it loses for it, because no, no tool is infallible. Well, the point is the strategy is worth it if it'll make you more money than you will lose. Okay. And so how does this tie into ThinkScript? Well, basically you can create your own strategy and it'll give you an entry point and an exit point, right? So you can see, for example, here, the strategy is telling me to enter this stock here. I enter, I buy 100, 100 shares, it rides up and then it tells me, okay, you got to sell here, all right? And then it tells me again to enter here and it rides up and it tells me to sell here, okay? So buy, sell, buy, sell, right? And at some point, this strategy might actually fail, all right? And that is when we want to, th that is what we want to tweak. So how would I use ThinkScript before, again, before getting into the code, how would I use ThinkScript to create a strategy? You know, how, how is it telling me, how is this one here telling me when to enter, when to exit, all right? So it's basically a comparison of these uh, moving averages right here. And the minute that this moving average crosses, you know, the slow one, let's say, crosses over the fast one, right? Or sorry, the fast one crosses back over the slow one, then it becomes a buy signal. And when it reaches, uh, you know, a certain point where it crosses back under, then it becomes a sell signal. All right, that's basically it. There's you know, no, 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 uh, no other magic behind that. All right, and what else do I have on the same chart? We'll have RSI, right? So that makes sense. Now, they don't necessarily line up because my strategy up here is not the RSI. Uh, this one told me to buy here. The RSI is actually at this point eventually getting closer to the overbought area. You know? So it's not exactly telling me to buy here, uh, but it is kind of sort of telling me that it is too high over here, right? So it does combine the strategy signal with the RSI signal. And of course you can add whatever other indicators you already have, uh, like the MACD as well, as well. And then this one, see how the MACD, it didn't, again, it didn't line up exactly. Um, above the zero line, the cross is, doesn't happen until here, uh, which is a few, what, hours later after my um, next trades educational strategy you know, algorithm uh, signal the buy, okay, and um, and that's basically how you can complement you know uh, your strategy with some other indicators. And what was you know just mind blowing to me, it was amazing. Um, you can actually backtest this, and it'll tell you uh, how much money you would have made by using this strategy, right? Uh, if you would have bought here, you know, and it tells you this is your profit and loss right here, and basically it's telling you that you've been green for the past what uh, seven, eight days, something like that. All right. So how do you learn to do all these things? Well, that's what ThinkScript is about. All right. Uh, I have a different script right here. And um, and this is another one that I'm working on. I have you know, quite a few. So we're going to learn how to make this strategy. We're going to learn how to make these indicators down here. We're going to learn how to make these um, these labels, dynamic labels with data that actually help you, you know, uh, with, uh, give you uh, important data points that might be relevant at a particular moment. Uh, and that is what we're going to be looking at. So let's switch over uh, to the tools, to the ThinkScript editor. Okay. So what we, we know what we want to be able to achieve. We want to be able to code our own studies, you know, like an RSI, but modified. You know, we want to be able to, uh, to code something like a MACD. You know, have you ever felt that, you know, the MACD is really good, but it could use a little tweak right here. Or, you know, I really like the RSI, but if I combine it with Bollinger Bands or something like that, or 2-1-2 two, two standard deviation you know, channels or something like that, you know, whatever. If you want to be able to code it yourself, ThinkScript is actually, <clears throat> I mean, you could definitely do it in any other programming, like full-blown programming language, but ThinkScript, uh, of course, you have to have a ThinkScript platform, uh, is designed with that in mind. So it makes it a lot simpler, a lot simpler than it otherwise would be if you had to code it with something like Python or whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead. And uh, also, I wanted to mention, let me see here. Yeah, we'll 
we'll, we'll start with the simplest possible. I wanted to mention that uh, TradingView, of, cor of course, also allows you to do this kind of stuff. I'm not very experienced in TradingView coding itself. I know that uh, JTW, which is a, uh, an amazing X-Trades contributor, uh, he hosts the Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, online whatever they're called nowadays, I don't know, you know, uh, the online streaming pre-market uh, sessions. Uh, he knows a lot. He created his own indicator. He actually has it on sale uh, on the X-Trades website. Uh, you can get it from him. Uh, it's called the Neptune Trading System, NTS, and you can get it over the website. And um, so he's got a lot more experience. Uh, well, he's got experience, period, on TradingView, where, whereas I don't. So um, I, I guess we complement each other quite well here because I'm focusing on... Um, on uh, thinkorswim. Okay, this one is really simple. This is basic. Like you see a lot of stuff here, but this is all grayed out. So that means it's all comments, not actual working code. I mean, it's written in there, but it's, you see how it has this uh, um, the pound sign in front of it. That means that that whole line has been commented. So what is thinkscript? What uh, let's let's get you know the basic idea. You know the simplest thing that we could do on thinkscript. Okay, so this is an indicator. All right. Um, and this is basically a static indicator. So what are we doing here? Uh, like I said, forget about this commented area up above. The 50 day average uh, the 50 day average volume for tesla is something like this okay uh, the words that are in white are the keywords which means that you cannot use them so input for example is a keyword def uh, which stands for define is a keyword the average type dot simple is obviously uh a, well it's a complex keyword it's probably some sort of an array or something like that like a tuple i don't know uh and then um the volume as well uh, because volume is something that you would just as you know the close or the high or the low or the volume okay those are all keywords you can't use those as well um the white ones are defining something you know in this case it's saying that whatever you're going to define next which in this case we call it symbol that name we can pick and it won't make a difference is uh of input type okay which means that you can change its value um okay and then define is when you're creating you know you're creating something that is not going to uh, be editable you know by the user so in this case we're uh, basically what we're saying is okay we, we want to create a symbol okay and we're going to call it symbol uh, and we're going to be able to to, we're going to call it Tesla in this case, or TFLA, okay? Um, and we will see why this is not very useful a bit later. But, okay, on the second line, because this is only a three, four line code, bit of code, on the second line, we're going to create create something, we're going to define it as AVG volume, okay? And what this, this is going to be obviously average volume. What, what this AVG volume is defined as is, it is defined as the moving average, which is a proprietary function of ThinkerScript, right? So you can't change it, but it knows what it's doing. So it goes and it gets the moving average, right? And what type of average? In this case, we've defined it as a simple average, right? And we have, there's a comma which separates this first argument, so to speak. If you've used Excel, you know, you know, you know when you're defining a function, it basically you got to give it all its arguments. The first argument of the moving average function is you got to tell it what kind of, <clears throat> of, um, of moving average it's going to be. In this case, it's going to be simple. It's not going to be um, uh, uh, different, you know, exponential moving averages or whatever. It's going to be a simple moving average. Okay, and then the second parameter, uh, is volume okay? What is it going to be taking a simple moving average of? It's going to be take, taking a simple moving average of volume, okay? And it knows, and that's why it's a green highlighted keyword. It knows what volume is. It knows that you're talking about the actual volume of a particular ticker, okay? And what is the period over which it's going to be taking that volume? In this case, it's 50. All right. So that means that the, this is going to return the 50-day moving simple average of the volume, okay? And that is what our AVG volume variable, which we are defining right now, is going to be, okay? And then we're going to define the actual Tesla volume, okay? <clears throat> okay, so what are we doing here? Well, we're getting the symbol, which is the symbol that we defined. And when you mouse over, you can see that it highlights every other place on your code where, well, it's visible on screen, where that uh, variable is being used, the same as it did with average volume, okay? Okay, so it's gonna get the Tesla symbol, so it's gonna say if, you know, and it goes and it carries out this function, which is the get symbol. The get symbol function says that you have to tell it what symbol you wanna get. Well, in this case, we're trying to get the Tesla one, okay? We could have just as easily, and this is why I said this is, you know, kind of, and it makes sense. We could have easily just typed in Tesla here in quotations and it would have worked just as well. Okay, so if we get the symbol Tesla, then the volume, right, or else nothing, right? So we're going to get the volume for it, and that's going to give us the Tesla volume, all right? And then we're going to add a label. It's going to, it's going to have, uh, it's, yes, it's visible. It's showing, I believe this is showing. If you don't, if you're not sure what something is, you can come over here to the inspector and you can look for, you know, something. Um, Sorry, not the inspector, it's the reference. And you can look for something. So the add label would be somewhere in there. Um, let's see if I can, right, you can get info on it. And that's not very useful if it's all the way down there. Okay, so it's telling us that the first one is if it's visible, if the label that we are creating with the add label function is visible. And it's a Boolean type uh, uh, parameter because it's either going to be yes or no, or true or false, or whatever. And then the text that you want to be displayed on this label, obviously any kind of text, and then the custom color, which is going to be of type color. Okay, so. In this case, what we're saying is we want to display this label that we're adding, yes, because sometimes you don't want to add it immediately. Sometimes you want the label to pop up if, some, if something triggers it. Okay, so in this case, yes, I want to display the label immediately, and I want that label to be 50-day moving average volume, or sorry, 50-day average volume. And then we're going to append to that static text label 
average volume as text, right? So we're, have to, we're having to convert whatever this is as text, all right? And then we're going to go ahead and display this volume. So what does that look like? It looks like this, all right? In this case, it's NVIDIA. Uh, it's um, 1,101,679, all right? Let's go ahead and type in Tesla, okay? And there it is, 2,740,949. So it's giving us the average daily, 50 daily, 50 day, let me, say, let me say that again. It's giving us the 50-day moving average volume value of 2,740,949. Now, if you were to go back and get the daily volume for Tesla, then that is exactly, and then, and then calculate its 50-day moving average, then that is the value that you should get, right? 2.7 million. And what is this useful for? Well, what I was trying to do with this is actually something like down here. I wanted to go ahead and, and compare the daily volume to the, the average 50-day volume to today's volume. You know, to a particular day's volume. As you can see here, the volume here is low. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit larger here, and it's growing and it's growing and it's growing quite a bit. This is, you know, a lot bigger than it was back here. So basically, uh, I wanted to get an idea of, okay, well, this might look big, you know, within what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. But what does it look like over the past fifty days, right? And how does that compare to what it is today? So this is an unfinished script, okay, and that's why it's got all this mess here. But I basically wanted to give you an idea of how simple it is that in five lines, what is it, one, two, three, well, we haven't finished it, so we haven't gotten this one yet. Um, four lines, we basically are able to get the 50-day moving average of a sticker, of a ticker, sorry, and just basically throw it up on your chart so you can you can see, right? And you could imagine how that would be incredibly useful because then all you would have to do is get today's volume and then divide it by the 50-day uh, moving average volume, and then you would have an idea of how, just how active today's volume is compared to the past 50 days, right? And if it's quite a bit above, then you know that something is going on during that day. If it's below, then you know that, you know, it's probably a very slow and, and not very liquid day, etc. So that is ba basically the entry to, you know, thinker script, to think script, and why we want to do, how, how easy it is to do certain things that we want to do, okay? So this has gotten to be a very long video. So I'm going to go ahead and leave these other scripts for later, okay? So what we're looking at right now, what we've seen so far, is how to make a script that creates something as simple as a label, all right? We also are going to dive into how to create a script that gives us data that shows up on something like scan, okay, that shows up as a column script, okay, like as you can see here, Arval, okay, Arval is not your typical mark, mark percentage, last net change, bid ask high low, it is something that you wanted to calculate, and this, you know, this column was added by creating a script, so we're going to look at that, we're going to look at how to create a strategy, which is this strategy over here, just, it's basically something that goes on a chart, right, and we're also going to look at the uh, the study range, right? The study range is another one that doesn't go on the price action. It just goes as a separate indicator down below, okay? Kind of like the VFI to newsletter, which is the one, the volume flow index that we were looking at, which is what basically got this, you know, the whole ball rolling. And then this floating PL here is part of the strategy one. And I'll show you how to do that as well, which is really cool. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will try to, um, you know, put this all together uh, and make the next, you know, probably two videos uh, a little bit more in-depth by, you know, getting a closer look at these, where are they, the other uh, three scripts that we want to look over. And this is, you know, these are going to be a little bit longer, so I kind of want to take my time on those, but I thought it would be a great idea to get started with, you know, just four or five lines, show you how easy it is to get data from something like ThinkScript. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and, um, you know, give me a like on the video on YouTube, uh, and if you have any questions, maybe, maybe a little bit you know, further in the topics that you want to look at uh, regarding ThinkScript or Thinkorswim in general, then go ahead and uh, leave them in the comments down below the YouTube video. And uh, also, don't forget that if you use the link down in my description down here of this video to sign up for an Xtrades uh, membership, uh, if you use my link, I will give you a uh, video tour of the entire Xtrades community. So that, include, that includes the Discord community and how to take the alerts and how to navigate the different channels. It includes the mobile app and it includes the uh, desktop, you know, or website app as well, and uh, give you some of my uh, most um, uh, sought after videos on trading in general, trading basics, risk management, and all the different uh, topics that I cover here on the Xtrades community. So I hope uh, to see you in the next video, and I hope to see your comments down below. And don't forget to get your membership plan today at Xtrades using my link down below. Have a great one.